If there is one thing in Africa that is modern, it is the presence of the mass media. As on no other continent, in Africa, the proliferation of radio, press, and television is a novelty, and the revolutionary world of the internet even more so. The power of satellites is slowly winning out over the tom-tom. Then while I was in, in prison, I was in central prison, and I developed the liking of uh, photojournalism and writing. When I came out from jail, I started by selling newspapers. Then he was lucky in his birthday, he was presented with a camera. That camera, then I started using it. My first picture to be used was used at post after the world newspaper was banned. And then during the time while I was freelancing, I was arrested, jail again, in and out. Mbuzeni Zulu became active in fighting the apartheid regime when his brother was arrested, tortured and jailed by the South African police in 1963. Shortly afterwards, he too was put in prison and tortured to the point of losing a hip. After that, when I was out, then I started again because I couldn't get a job. All I had to survive was through only photography. And then in 1983, the Soviet hired me full time. The Sowetan is the newspaper with the highest circulation in South Africa. It prints 450,000 copies for an average of 2 million readers a day. It was founded in 1981 at the most critical moment in the anti-apartheid struggle. Sowetan was then consolidated very clearly as a newspaper that spoke uh, for the people. It became the soul of the people, it became the undisputed voice of the people. At that time, in the 1980s, the black community was under tremendous air pressure from the apartheid regime, and there was a feeling of hopelessness with black people beginning to feel that uh, there was no future uh, for them and, and also no future for the country. Sowetan uh, itself has been the voice of black people from the time that it was started. Mostly is that uh, people were killed by the security forces. I would call the, 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 the regime that time was very brutal to African people. My camera always captured weeping, oppressed, suffering people. You know, you could see poverty in their faces. People were in chains. People were crying. People were oppressed. Things were very difficult back then because I remember um, I had to do a story, I was on a magazine, then I had to do a story about uh, people who were on death row and because it was so difficult and you know you did certain stories, you wanted to do them because you had the passion but um, you just knew the risk, you know, you were scared. It's very boring now uh, being a journalist. Before 1994, it was a major uh, adventure to be a journalist. You faced danger at every turn. Uh, mostly, uh, you had to cover uh, stories that had to do with unrest. 
and it was almost impossible for the activists on the street to differentiate uh, journalists from other people. And it made life very exciting. The emotion with which the Sowetan's editor-in-chief speaks is the result of the constant human rights violations to which South African blacks were subjected. Today, his paper's journalists can fortunately devote their time to covering events such as the annual Miss Soweto contest. All of these young women were born during the most difficult years of the anti-apartheid struggle. They spent their childhood in a country dominated by a white minority that denied blacks their fundamental rights. This apparently frivolous event is a symbol of the new era. Today, these young women, like many other men and women in South Africa, have reasons to be confident about the future. These young women in particular dream of being models and striding down the runways of Paris and New York someday. In fact, some of the most sought-after models on the international scene are black and South African.